Hey, what's going on everyone? Misha Wilson here and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, I have something really special planned for you where I'm actually gonna be giving you free access to an event recording, an event that people pay hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars when you include the airfare and the hotel and all that jazz to go ahead and attend. You're gonna get access to this recording 100% free. Now within this presentation, you're going to learn the basic fundamentals of internet marketing and really you're gonna learn how to speak the language all right so when you see internet marketing gurus out there talking about you know tripwire offers continuity offers back-end offers etc you will know literally exactly what they're talking about so that you can really kind of understand what they're teaching take those lessons apply those lessons and ultimately make more money you're gonna learn from someone who's actually done over a billion dollars in total sales throughout his career Ryan Jaden and I know you'll get a ton of value so as always, if you get value out of this episode, please let me know in the comments section below what your biggest takeaway is. And don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell icon notification button so that you're notified when you do more videos just like this. Let's go ahead and dive right in. How many folks in here are asking yourselves, hey, this is really awesome, but I still kind of feel like they're speaking to me in a different language I haven't fully figured out yet. Anybody have that feeling like, eh, still trying to learn this? How many folks honestly are saying to yourselves, listen, I think I have a pretty good idea of what's going on here, but I really want, need, and expect to learn more? Because uh, every hand should be up for that one, right? Can you agree that in order to be really great at something, it's gonna take time? Does anybody agree with that? Give me a clap if, that's, if that makes sense. Can you agree, can we all agree, that in order to be really great at something, it's gonna take not just time, because you could sit on the couch for 10 years, right, and say, well, I've been at this for 10 years, <laughs> right? It takes repetition, right? It takes effort, it takes going at it and being consistent. Would we all agree with that, yes? Yeah. All right, nice. Now, would you also all agree that it probably takes somebody to help show you the way, yes? Because if you could figure this out on your own, then there'd be no purpose for, behind being in here, right? You could be like James Concilio and just walk around without your pants on all day. <laughs> I had to laugh, I love James, I've known James for a while. So I'm gonna bring up this next speaker and I gotta tell you, I truly believe that the next hour or so, the time between now and lunch is gonna be pivotal in your business. If you answered yes to being in any one of those categories where you say to yourself, listen, I just wanna learn I'm a dry sponge, I'm here to take in the information and apply it, then you're gonna to wanna to have your pen and your papers ready for this next speaker. I'm gonna to introduce to you not just a really amazing guy, but a, but a friend of mine, somebody that I actually look to uh, as being one of the top influencers in our industry because he's got so much friggin' experience. Ryan Jayton is the owner and operator of uh, a consulting, global consulting firm that he and his company, they go around, they train people in marketing. Uh, business growth, sales, and collectively, they've done almost a billion, with a B as in bumblebee, a billion dollars in sales. Wow. Let it just sink in. A billion dollars. It doesn't even mean anything. But here's the important thing. Do you suppose that somebody that's done a billion dollars in sales could probably teach you how to make your first 10 figures, or 10, 10 figures, yeah. your first, your first 10,000? Yeah, maybe unravel some of that mystery, kind of start to decode a little bit about what it takes to build a really true authentic business. I'm not talking about some weird kind of fly by night thing. I'm talking about a real business. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm just gonna tell you this. I've been doing this a long damn time. I've been an entrepreneur. I got out of the United States Navy back in 2008, full-time active duty. Yeah, go Navy, <laughs> Naval Aviator. Worked my way up through the ranks. I'll talk about that on Sunday. Ever since I got out, my purpose in life has been to learn from the best. And I will tell you, I've known Ryan now for about two or three years. Every time he speaks, I listen. I will be in the back with my pen out and my paper going. I expect to see the same from you. Are you guys ready from Jay, uh, to, to hear from Ryan? Are you truly ready? Hey, listen. This guy's a legend, and what he's going to teach you, you will never hear again, and you won't hear it anywhere else. So you better be ready for my friend. Get up on your feet. Get loud, get rowdy and raucous for Mr. Ryan Jayton. 
Give them all, let's go. Get up for them. I can't hear you. Hey, good. Oh, today I'm really happy to talk to you. Is there anyone here who speaks Chinese? Is there anyone? Do you like to speak Chinese? Do you speak Chinese? No? You really don't speak Chinese. It's not good. 我真係歡迎你。有冇人喺度中意錢啊？錢中唔中意啊？你識講中文？乜嘢？我真係唔識聽你講嘢啦。中唔中意錢啊？我會俾你一百蚊，如果你識中文，有冇啊？冇。Have you 錯啦 ？Have you ever been somewhere or been in an audience, one on one or in a group, where somebody was speaking to you and you were going like this, but you had no earthly idea what they were talking about? If you've experienced that, not in the last thirty seconds, but before, raise your hand. How many of you wanted so bad to understand what I was saying? Yeah. How many of you were sitting there going, "Oh, I should have paid attention when I was at Yale," <laughs> right? Um, there's a reason why I do that. I want to interrupt this pattern in your brain. I want you to stop doing this and start writing some notes. I want to make sure that you leave this presentation with some information where that light bulb will go on in your head, so you can finally understand what people are talking about. Is that fair enough? Raise your hand and say yes. Yeah. I am not going to teach you how to speak Chinese, because that's no fun, and it sounds pretty awful, doesn't it? Be honest, right?、Uh, when I was studying the the curriculum at Yale on how to speak Chinese as a second language, my best friend was studying to speak Spanish, and he and I were communicating, and I said, "This Chinese thing blows. Like this is hard. Like this really sucks." And he's like, "Oh, don't worry." I, I'll tell you how I'm learning Spanish.、And、I was like, "Oh, I'm all ears. Tell me." And he said, "What you do is you take an English version of a book. Okay, you take an English version of a book, and you put it side by side with a book in the language you're trying to learn, and you just read them side by side. And by the time you get to that whole book, you'll be really good at it." So I sent him an email with this in it, and I said, "Let me know how you do." <laughs> and I was thinking to myself. Why didn't Yale think of this, right? Like, it's a pretty good school, you know. I gotta call those guys in Connecticut and be like, "Hey, his advice was horrible." But there's a there's a great metaphor and a great analogy to what we're going to talk about today. His advice was actually really good, just not in the sense of learning Chinese. Okay, I tried it, and、um, for, I'll leave this up here for just about a minute longer. If anybody can tell me what it says in the right side of the screen, I'll be impressed. But What I'm going to do today is I'm going to take two things: one that you know very well. I'm going to line it up next to something that you don't know well. I'm going to line it up to something that probably sounds a lot like Chinese to you, and I'm going to teach you a second language. What I'm going to teach you is how to speak internet. You see, there's something that's going on in the internet marketing industry. Internet marketers did not invent marketing. Newsflash, okay? They took traditional marketing concepts. They delivered in a digital format, changed all the language, and pretended like they invented it. Okay, but when they changed all the language, normal people like us were going, "What the hell are you talking about? You're saying all these words, and it might as well be Chinese because I don't understand a word that's coming out of your mouth." So you're going to hear words when they talk internet. You're going to hear words like offers, traffic, continuity, funnels. You're going to hear monetization, upsells. You're going to hear all these things, and when somebody's on stage teaching these to you, you're like, "Oh my gosh, I've never heard this stuff before." But you have, and I'm going to translate it for you today. 
This is why I want you to take some notes, because when you leave my presentation, I want you to have a better idea of what you're doing in internet marketing. And it's not foreign. It wasn't created when the internet was created. Al Gore had nothing to do with it. Okay, this has existed for many, many decades. So we're gonna go through that. Who's interested? Is this gonna help? Good. So I'm gonna talk about some of these things, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a traditional business that most of you know very well. We're gonna line it up against internet marketing and see the parallels so that you can start correlating them left to right, okay? Just like putting the English book next to the Spanish book, by the time we're done, we'll be able to understand it, okay? The case study that we're gonna talk about today is a company that most of you are familiar with. It's called Costco. Raise your hand if you own a Costco card or have ever shopped at a Costco or understand who that I'm talking about. Okay, about the whole room, Costco. Costco has an unbelievable business model. And it may surprise you, but that's the one we're gonna line up right next to internet marketing and we're gonna expose exactly what internet marketing is so it makes sense to you. But we're gonna use Costco's model to demonstrate it. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about internet marketing. We're gonna talk about gas, chicken, and hot dogs. It used to say wieners up there, but somebody in England told me that we shouldn't do that, right? Okay. And it wasn't our coach. But yeah, we're gonna talk about Costco. We're gonna talk about their model, okay? One of the primary things that made Costco successful was their location, okay? In real estate, they call it location, location, location. Costco originally was set up on a military base and they were selling office equipment to military personnel. The only people that could buy it were people that were in the military. And they were selling it at discounts to military people on a base. I think they were operating out of an airplane hangar when they started. And they decided they're gonna move and they're gonna go out into the public and so they started letting the public onto the base to shop at their warehouse. Then they ended up moving it out of the warehouse and started putting it in different locations around the world. Now Costco has a model. Costco puts their stores in very strategic places. Okay, they put it in high density places. Who here, by the raise of hands, can remember or recite the last commercial on television that you heard for Costco? Is that bizarre? No advertising. But they put their stores in locations where they get a ton of traffic. Okay, when they go in and research a market, they are, they've become very, very good at putting their stores in places that get a lot of drive-by traffic. This is called traffic. On the internet, you wanna put your offer in front of as many eyeballs as you can. Okay, you wanna become very good at putting it in the right places. Traffic is gonna be what makes you successful. The best product, the best funnel, and the best video will do you nothing if nobody sees it, okay? Traffic's important. Now, Costco has this business model. One of their business models is that they sell memberships to get into their warehouse. They sell an annual membership to come into their warehouse. Their annual membership is $55, okay? This is what's called a continuity program. Every year, in order to walk into their warehouse, you have to pay $55 to go in there and buy all their stuff. That's their business model. Who thinks you can get rich off of $55? Okay, how many of you raised your hand just because I did? Okay. They have an upsell program. If you wanna buy the executive membership, it's twice as much, it's $120, okay? You know why I buy the, the uh, executive membership? No, I would never show up that early. No, it's because they give you 1% cash back, right? You know, and I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking, hey, if I'm shopping there, why don't I get, like, that's called pay to play. Like, I paid them more to get money back. Okay, that's their model. Well, let me give you an idea of Costco's business model. In 2016, Costco's members generated $2.6 billion in membership fees. Do you think you can get rich off of 55 bucks? Um, an annual membership, it was continuity. Okay, so when you hear that word continuity in the internet space, all it means is you're collecting something from a customer over and over again. Now here's what's interesting, Costco is so committed to this membership fee, this is their primary source of profit. Okay, in 2017, Costco did $56 billion in product sales. 56 billion. Their cost of those goods was 54 billion. It took another two billion to deliver the goods to the customer. Let's do some math, 54 billion plus two is 56 billion and they did 56 billion in sales. What is Costco's business model? Memberships, 
That's really their business model. But they have to deliver a ton of value, and they have to deliver a ton of upfront stuff, front-end offers, in order to capture those memberships. So let's talk about some front-end offers. Let's talk about gasoline. I told you I'd teach you everything you need to know about internet with gasoline, chicken, and hot dogs, right? Costco has the best prices on gasoline. If you survey gas prices in any community, for the most part, you'll get the best prices per gallon on gasoline from Costco. Costco makes zero dollars on gasoline. They have those pumps out there, they, have some, they pay somebody to sit out there and they have all those amenities out there and you come and get discounted gasoline and they don't make any money on it. You know what that's called? Oh wait, do you know what that's called in internet terms? That's called a front end offer. The more people that come to their gas station out in front, the more people will come in the front door and buy their stuff, right? It's a business model. Did internet marketers invent this stuff? No. Did they invent the front end offer? Costco was doing it a long time before, right? Here's the interesting thing, just so you know how meticulous and how detailed their business model is, look at these numbers. The, they took the average gas savings, the average gas savings. This is what's called an irresistible offer. Have you ever heard that term? This is an irresistible offer. You will save, on average, $54.27 a year on gas if you got buy your gas from Costco, on average. 54.27, does that number correlate with anything? $55 a year in a membership. If you only bought gas from Costco, you would break even. Do you think that's on purpose? Their front end offer is funding your membership, okay? Starting, light's starting to go on a little bit. You're going, oh, this shows up every day. Holy cow, it's all around me. Okay, let's talk about chicken. Who here has bought a rotisserie chicken from Costco? Okay, last night? Then you're the perfect person. How much did you spend on that rotisserie chicken? Do you remember? $4.99. They have not chased the price, changed the price of that chicken in the last 15 years, and prices of poultry have gone up almost 75%. They have not changed the price. Now here's what's interesting. They sold 60 million chickens a year. Last year they sold 60 million rotisserie chickens for $4.99. They buy it, they cook it, they package it, and you, they can hand it to you and in seven minutes you can have it on your kitchen table for your family to eat for $4.99. It'll feed a family of four, or in my family too. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a front end offer. They don't make any money on that but they had 60 million people come in their front door in order to buy those chickens. Now, here's something interesting. Where's the chicken at? Where? The chicken's in the very back of the room. Is that an accident? Is that just where the ovens happen to be? Is that where they, the plugs just happen to be? No. They know that 60 million people walk through their door and walk past all the TVs and all the all the stuff that you don't, you know, you never knew you needed, you have to walk through everything in order to get your chicken. So it's the price you pay. What they're saying is, hey, if we're gonna give you this chicken at no profit, we're gonna expose you to everything we sell first. Okay, side note. Anybody know what Costco's number one product sold in their entire store is? Who said it? Number one product sold in Costco worldwide is toilet paper. Where's the toilet paper? Not just in the back. It's the back corner. They make you work for that stuff, right? They make you work for it. You have to be exposed to all of their products in order to get the toilet paper. By the way, has you ever like had to go to Costco and you only wanted one thing, you know, toilet paper, and you're like walking to the counter like, <laughs> the thing's huge, right? They sell so much of it. It's such an important product to them that they have special teams that design it and test it and manufacture it because toilet paper is really important to them but it's part of their marketing structure. They expose you to everything in the store. This is their marketing plan. This is their ascension model. Uh, let's talk about hot dogs. Who's had a hot dog and a soda from Costco? If you have kids, I know you've eaten more than your share. A dollar fifty. Dollar sixty-two with tax. This guy eats a lot of Coke <laughs> and hot dogs from Costco. <laughs> they have not raised the price of a, a hot dog and a Coke for 30 years. They make no money on a hot dog, but every year they sell 100 million hot dog and soda combinations. 
What does that mean to an internet marketer? A hundred million people buying their front end product who are in their store with the propensity to spend money. They know the demographic, they know who, they know who their avatar is. It's all the marketing process, okay? Now, as I, as I pull the curtains back on Costco, how many of you are disappointed? How many of you are going like, oh, they totally scammed me? No? Anybody? Oh, wait until I tell you what's next. <laughs> oh, this one's gonna get you. Costco has a philosophy, a marketing philosophy, and it's called the full cart philosophy. Their goal is they will design their stores, they will design their marketing process internally to make sure that everyone leaves with a full cart. And if you've ever shopped at Costco, you know it works, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like 100 bucks, it's like, I gotta go to Costco. Oh, here's a couple hundred dollars. Like, you just know it's gonna go somewhere. I mean, you're like, oh, these chocolate covered mangoes are only 10 bucks? Cool. But I bought like eight of those things before I even got my toilet paper. It's a full cart theory, okay? So I'm gonna tell you a quick story of my family uh, about a $700 bucket of hummus. Okay, true story. My, uh, my wife says to me, hey, will you go to the Costco and grab me some hummus? Seasonally at Costco, they sell beet hummus, okay? Happens to be really good. And uh, she says, will you go get me some? And I was like, sure, that's easy enough. So I stopped by Costco and where's the hummus? I go and I walk through the whole entire store and I don't walk in the door with the seven, you know, $7 thing of hummus. I walk in, arms loaded with two stand up paddle boards. <laughs> stand up paddle boards, I'm not kidding. Here they are. 350 bucks a piece. That's, there they are. I went in for hummus and I walked out with $700 worth of paddle boards. She did, because I had to go back and get the hummus. <laughs> Come on, I'm a guy, right? I'm like, no way, they're 10 feet tall. Like, and they fit under my arms. If, have you had this experience? Anybody had this experience before with Costco? Yeah, you went in for one thing, walked out with 25 others, right? It is a marketing process. Costco is a for-profit company. Do you think I felt scammed for walking out with these paddle boards? Okay, I'm gonna step off script just really, you can tell I don't really follow a script, but I'm gonna step off my script just a little bit and explain something to you on the side. The only time you regret this is when you don't use it. The only time you regret somebody else's marketing process is when you bought it and you don't use it. And all of a sudden, you feel, oh, I wasn't going to use that word. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, you feel like somebody took advantage of you, right? But in the end, they didn't take advantage of you. They were running a for-profit business, okay? I happen to be very cheap, and so there's no way that those are going to sit in my garage like that. In fact, uh, when I was preparing for this late last night, I uh, texted my wife. and I was like, hey, can you send me a picture of our paddle boards? I want to use this as an example, you know, and, and there they are. That's direct from my garage. Do you think I regret buying those when I went in there for hummus? I use it for what I bought it for, okay? I use those things all the time. If you see them, they're banged up, they're beat up, they have holes in them. My kids are like begging to go on them. Whenever we go on the boat, they're like, bring the paddle boards, bring the paddle boards. I have never once ever regretted that decision to trade my attention from a $7 bucket of hummus into a $700 purchase of paddle boards, ever, because I use them. Can you hear what I'm saying? Am I, are my lines wide enough to where you're reading right between all my lines? Do I need to let that sit just for a minute? The only time you regret it is when you don't use it. These events, sand, the community, we put these things together so that you can use what you bought. You can implement what you bought. Let me tell you a, a personal story. Um, I've been doing this for many years. It's something that I absolutely enjoy. Um, I've had the, the blessing of having some success with it. I've had the blessing of having some not success with it at times. But um, every once in, you hear people on stage say it's not about the money. Anybody ever heard this? 
Okay, the only people that ever say they're the ones that already made it. Was that too honest? Okay, while, while we're on that, let me tell you one more funny one. Anybody on stage ever tell you don't work harder, work smarter? Yeah, they only say that after they worked really hard and made all their money. Okay, but they get up here and they tell you these things, right? And they tell you that it's not about the money. I've said that before on stage. I've said it's not about the money. Well, for a period of my career and for the period of my time online, I will admit, and I won't apologize, it was absolutely about the money. But I can spend money, obviously. <laughs> Just send me to Costco. But there's something that happens every once in a while that, that takes you back, that steps you back a little bit. And you're going through your routine, you get into this little, you know, I'm on stage, I'm a speaker kind of guy, you know, and then you show up at an event like this and you haven't seen some people for a couple of years. You run into a guy like JT the Bolt and he puts his arms around you and he says, it's so good to see you again. It's like a long lost friend, okay? Then you're, you're out last night and you run into um, people like Chris and Susan Beasley. And, uh, and they say, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. And all of a sudden you get that little drop in your voice and you're like, what? I thought it was all about the money, okay? And then you run into Muriel. And sorry, this is like, this is where it gets real. This is where it gets fun for you as business owners. I run into Muriel and she says, hey, you challenged me a year ago. You asked me what my intention was. And I told you I wanted to move to Costa Rica. And you see her video in the beginning, she and her husband actually moved to Costa Rica and she said, thank you for challenging me. Then it became real. Then I realized I was using my business. The thing that I bought, the thing that put me on this stage eventually, I used it, I implemented it. I struggled with it. I spent money on it. But never once have I ever felt scammed or taken advantage of. Now I appreciate the marketing schemes. Now when I go to Costco, I'm like, what else do they have? <laughs> I'm like, I got my wallet. Oh, hummus? That's it? Actually, the hummus is very good. I share these things with you because I want you to better understand how this all works. Marketing is around you every single day. How many of you have a main street of commerce in your hometown? There's like a, a Broadway or a Parkway or a State Street or a University or a Main Street. And on that street, there's a lot of commerce. What I would challenge you to do is to walk up and down that street and start pointing at different businesses and seeing if you can identify what their business plan is. See if you can figure out how they created a business in a traditional sense, because for a lot of us at our age, being as young as we are, right? We remember traditional business better than we remember internet business, right? So if we go out and find those businesses, let's, let's look at an insurance broker. An insurance broker, is that a traditional, socially accepted occupation as an insurance broker? Sure, we can all recognize that, we, we're forced it's like one of the last legalized forms of extortion, right? You have to buy insurance. <laughs> oh, personal opinion, sorry. Uh, but yeah, let's look at their business model. Can we correlate it to internet marketing? Do you realize that an insurance broker in internet terms is what we call an affiliate? An insurance broker does not offer insurance. They do not write you a check when you crash your car. When your basement floods, they don't come and fix it. An insurance broker advertised, got your attention, and gave you to an insurance company. They were the middleman. They are an affiliate of an insurance company or several insurance companies. So when you see the insurance broker, think about it, go, I wonder how they get business. I wonder how they get traffic, okay? What about the car wash? The car wash in the corner, what kind of business model is that? Driven. What's that? Traffic. traffic driven, absolutely. Okay, it is a retail service business. You come in and you buy their service directly from them. Okay, what are the kind of businesses? What about the smoothie shop? What kind of business model is a smoothie shop on the main street in your hometown? Direct sales, but the business model behind it is most often, unless it's a small mom and pop, a franchise. We have one on our main street in town called Tropical Smoothie. You actually buy a franchise from Tropical Smoothie and they will set you all up. The benefit of being set up with Tropical Smoothie is all the recipes are done, all the signage is done, all the marketing collateral is done, everything's done, they have a brand name. 
All you do is spend your money on it and you come in and move in. Now, how many of you, if you bought a tropical smoothie, you invested the money, it's about $87,000 for the licensing fee. You have to buy some equipment, you have to pay the lease, and you have to do, let's just say all in, once you get ready to open your doors, you spend about $150,000 to $200,000 to open your doors. $150,000 to $200,000, how does that feel in your gut right now? Yeah, anybody's blood pressure go up just a little bit when I said those numbers? Yeah. Okay, imagine if you actually did it. There's people in this room that I know have bought franchises. There's people in this room that have invested money like that. And it's, a, it's, this, it's this weight on your shoulders. But you're doing it because you believe in it. You're doing it because you believe 100% this is going to work. You've read somewhere or you followed somebody that this model will work. On day one, you open your doors. You're like, here I am, world. Tropical smoothie. I hope I get advertising rights for saying their name 10 times on stage. But um, <laughs> on day one, nobody shows up. That $150,000 to $200,000 that you had convinced yourself was worth it, how heavy does it feel now on day one when nobody shows up? It's, that might as well be 10 million, right? It feels like a ton of bricks, right? So naturally what you'll do if that happens is you'll get frustrated, you'll stomp your feet, shut the door, put a chain around it, and go and call the, the company that sold you the franchise and complain and say, you scammed me. Natural process, right? No, would you do that? No. How many of you, if that happened, on day two, would have your nephew on the corner with a big tropical smoothie sign doing dances, going, you know, like driving traffic, being creative and pushing people into your company, right? That's what we would do. There's something kind of strange that happens in the internet space. People invest in companies or they buy businesses or they follow a mentor, and the minute they put that money in, they absolutely lose their minds. I mean, not you, of course, not you. I'm just saying. Some people just absolutely lose their minds. They, they forget. They don't get leads on day one and they put a chain around the door and they're like, oh, I got scammed. Then there's some people who are like, oh, well, that didn't work. And that fuels them. And they try harder and they get creative. They create strategic partnerships, which your coaching zone people will help you learn more about. They find ways to drive traffic into their business. Whether you are promoting a company like San as an affiliate or whether you're promoting your own e-commerce business or you're really promoting something else. They try over and over and over until it works. As we're pulling the curtains back, I wanna tell you something about the speakers that are gonna come on stage after me over the next couple of days. I wanna teach you how to, how to best utilize them. First of all, I want you to ask every one of them if they've ever lost money doing what they're doing. I want you to ask them that because we get in the habit of talking about as much money as we made, right? I want you to understand that losing money, being broke and starting from scratch and starting from the depths, it's all part of the journey. How many people get on stage and tell you about their stories of woe? But then I came back, right? Because heroes are only measured by the size of their villains. Let that sink in. That's why they tell the stories. The other thing you should realize when they tell those stories is, huh, everybody's been there. If everybody's been there, that must be part of the journey. So as you're talking to these people on stage, as you're talking to these people in the hallways and your lunches and your breaks, ask them those types of questions. Have you lost money doing what you're doing? And if they're honest with you, they'll say, of course. I lose money all the time. And you say, oh, and that shouldn't scare you. That should just make you feel normal. Being broke is part of the journey. But there's, the people that get on these stages have another thing in common. They did not let that stop them. Misha got up here and talked about there's no such thing as failure. There's only such thing as quitting. Ask them their stories about what got them to not quit. I've done this a long time and I can promise you as sure as I stand here, there's people in this audience that have at times, maybe as recently as this morning, wanted to quit, okay? And I'm just here to encourage you. I'm gonna tell you it's part of the process. It's part of the process to have those feelings. What's also part of the process is having the feelings of creativity and strength and energy to overcome those things. So I'm gonna challenge you to do something this weekend. I want you to think about this Costco mentality. I want you to think about other businesses that you interact with and see if you can start dissecting and translating what their business model is and how it relates to internet marketing. Because there's something else about Costco that you need to understand. Costco doesn't only offer chicken, hot dogs, and gasoline. They offer an entire menu of products. They know that if they bring you in the front door with something which we call a lost leader, a front end offer or something like that, an ebook, 
uh, step program, you know, bring you in the front door with these front end offers, they know that there'll be a high propensity for you to buy something. And I love buying stuff from Costco because they've got good stuff. I mean, do you see the look on my daughter's face? Like, that's good stuff, right? She won't get off of that thing. Wait, is she looking in pain? No, she's having fun, I promise. Um, so, I do? I'm having fun. Don't let my face conf confuse you. I don't want her to fall off, right? When, when Costco sells me a $1.50 hot dog and soda combo, or they sell me gas cheaper than anybody in town, you know what it does to me? It makes me like them. My mind psychologically says, if they offered me that, which is a great value, the chickens are amazing. If they offered me that, I have to assume that the paddleboard's gonna be worth it. And I never regret buying it. So with that in mind, what did Misha say when he got up here this morning? He said, nobody from stage will sell you anything. Except who? Him. Him. He said he'll make you an offer at the, end of this, at the end of this meeting, right? Do you think it's reasonable that if he loses money on his front end product, if he loses money on bringing you here to an event like this, for the sole purpose of educating you and inspiring you and getting you to move forward, that he's got something of value that you can't live without in your business at the end of all this? Absolutely. That would be a reasonable exchange, right? Is this helping? I'm the only one talking. Is this good? Say yes. Yeah. How many of you simply by correlating internet marketing and traditional business, now the light bulbs are starting to go, oh, this isn't voodoo. This is like real stuff, right? Now when you talk to your friends, like, what do you do? And you're like, I do business. It's not weird. You're not like, oh, I'm in internet marketing. They're like, oh, what are you going to sell me? Like, can you see now that this is traditional business? No matter if you're going to temporarily follow or promote SAN. See, I think SAN's a great model to follow in the beginning, right? But you should use SAN's franchise systems. It's not a franchise, but they've got everything set up for you. They've got mentors. They've got systems. They've got everything on the menu you need. And if you use that temporarily until you get your feet under you and you figure out how to do it, Later, when you go to launch your own thing, your own e-commerce store or your own consulting services or things like that, you'll know how to do it. And you got to leverage, <laughs> hopefully he's not listening, you get to leverage all the money he lost and all the sleep he lost for your benefit, okay? Because <laughs> someday, um, someday you're gonna come to somebody you met at an event and you're just gonna say, thanks. What you said pushed me. What you said inspired me. And at that moment, you will forget all the money you made and you will cherish those moments because there will come a time where you will be on the stage. I'm going to prepare you for that. You are writing your story right now at this moment. I, at one time, sat at a table at an event and had to make the decision if I was going to go all in or not. And boy, was that choice difficult. Okay. Well, it was an easy choice. It just, I had some stuff in my mind that was limiting me. But once I did it, it put me in motion to be where I am today. I run a multinational consulting company at this point in my career. I do work from home and I do wear pants. <laughs> as far as you know. Um, but, it, but it gives you that flexibility. It gives you that opportunity when you follow these things. Okay. I hope that throughout this weekend, you're thinking about this Costco model and you're thinking, okay, Misha's done this, and he's done this, he's done this, or when you're running your business, are you willing now to lose a little bit of money to make a $47 sale? Yeah. How much would you be willing to lose? Break even. Break even? Okay. She's willing to break even. You're greedy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if you could get 60 million people to walk through your door in your business, would you be willing to lose a little bit of money to make that happen, knowing that they had all these products on the menu they could buy from you? Okay. Do you have a little bit less anxiety now of thinking, well, if I spend this money in advertising and I lose money? Well, yeah, you're going to lose money. It's called, front, it's called marketing. Okay. Would you rather do the Super Bowl method? Here's $3 million for 45 seconds of advertising in the Super Bowl. And I'm going to go, oh, man, I hope this works. Right? <laughs> Would you rather do that? That's losing money too. Oh, but it's traditional, so it's acceptable. Right? Hopefully I'm poking some buttons here. Pushing some buttons, not poking. 
So that's my point is line up these traditional ideas with the internet marketing ideas so that you can better understand how you're running your business as you'll make decisions differently. You will spend your money differently. You will create marketing funnels differently. You will create front end offers differently. When you start analyzing all the companies and businesses that run retail in your individual markets and your locations, you will start recognizing how you also can do that. But what is Costco's number one market position, value market position? It was my first slide about them. What was it? Location, location, location. In today's technological digital age, the best location that you can run a business by far is on the internet. You are in the right place. What is the number one highest producing company right now in product sales in the world? Amazon. Amazon. They are getting ready to be the, the first company to hit a trillion dollar valuation. They went from selling books to selling everything. And it's all delivered online. I can make a purchase today on Amazon and it'll be at my house before my plane lands. They figured out a way online to do it. Location, location, location. You are in the right place. What, so if you're right in the place, this weekend is about how do I launch? How do I scale? How do I grow? When you go sit down and meet with your coaches in the coaching zone, okay, they're gonna ask you some tough questions about what you've done to get started. As you start going through that, realize that you need to build a Costco model. Make sure you're offering all the products on the menu, okay? If Costco only offered gasoline, we wouldn't have Costco. If they only offered hot dogs, we wouldn't have it. They offered a menu of stuff. Make sure that you have a menu of items that you're selling in your business. For those of you who are already all in, you offer all the products on the menu. You have the greatest opportunity for gain. You can risk more money in advertising because you get more opportunity to make money in the back end. So keep that in mind as you visit with your coaches. I will tell you guys, I just wanna thank you. Um, one of the most common questions we speakers get is, don't you get nervous when you're on stage? And I always say yes. I get really nervous when I get on stage, can't you tell? Um, until I get on stage and I get to see you. I'm not gonna point anybody out, but I've connected eyeball to eyeball with many of you in this room. And, uh, and every one of you have a story. This means something different to every single one of you. I've been there, I've been through that journey. I'm still on that journey. I have a lot of success ahead of me and I have a few you know, failures ahead of me I'm looking forward to as well. But uh, this is the place where I learn. This is the place where I get my energy. This is what inspires me as seeing you guys here. I promise you, as sure as I stand here, there's a handful of you that will be on a stage like this within the next 12 months because of what you started here at this event. And for that, I congratulate you. And I hope I'm sitting in the audience when you speak someday. Thank you very much for your time. All right, what do you guys think of Ryan? Does it, does it make you love Costco even more? <laughs> I was just sitting back there listening to him and I was like, yeah, I've actually had a $500 bag of chips before. I've actually had one of those moments where I walked out of there with way too much stuff, not even planning for it. Does it give you that sense of kind of control and more understanding of what you are now doing as entrepreneurs? Do you feel a little bit more clear do you? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. This is, what, this is the beginning, my friends. We're really starting a journey that I hope you start to see as a lifelong journey. This is a profession. And if you treat it like a profession and see yourselves as a professional, man, you could do, you could do numbers like you wouldn't believe. You can make sales. You can make money like you wouldn't believe. But more importantly, you're going to have the kind of story, kind of like what, what Ryan was just talking about. You know, he started off making that that kind of connection sitting in a, in a room similar to this going, what the heck am I doing here? Having the, the understanding in the back of his mind that he knew he needed to go all in, but was, had that like limiting belief behind him. And then you fast forward a few years, and now he's got a multinational consulting firm that's made close to a billion dollars. That's pretty crazy if you start thinking about where it all started, that little seed that was planted in the dirt, and now it's become this amazing oak tree. And that's exactly what you all have in front of you right now. That's pretty exciting, yeah? Yes. All right. Are you guys hungry? Yes. Are you starving? Yes. 
Here's the good news. We're about 10 minutes ahead of schedule. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back here at 1 p.m. We're going to start at 1 p.m. sharp. I'm going to introduce you to one of the most awesome guys in the entire home-based business industry, somebody who I not only look to as a friend and as a mentor, but honestly as a brother. You're going to meet him when we come back. He's going to be talking to you about how he's made over $20 million over the last 10 years. You think you could probably learn a thing or two from a guy like that? Yeah. He's an awesome dude. I call him the godfather. You'll get to meet him when he comes back. Come back ready to rock and roll before 1 o'clock. So you're going to have about an hour. you got about 10 minutes, to, 10 minutes to noon, so you have about an hour and 10 minutes. So make sure you get something to eat. There's lots of great options here inside the casino. I recommend you stay inside the casino. Uh, I'm not sure what floor we're on or what floor all the food's on, but uh, it's, it's, it's within walking distance, so it's fairly short. Make sure you get a buddy, have a conversation, make connections. That's what live events are all about, and we will see you guys back here at 1 p.m. Have an awesome lunch.